So everyone loves a good story. And today we're having a story about how we got from this to this. The Maxtrax pins in their locking system is a brilliant system, I really like it. And they've got these knuckles that you can turn to lock them in place, you can put a padlock through, nice and simple, secures the Maxtrax easily, allows you to mount it anywhere you like, whether it be on the side, the roof rack, on the back, great system. People do come across a problem with those knuckles being a bit tight, especially if you've got bent boards and you, you can't quite get those knuckles turned 90 degrees, or if you've been doing a lot of travel and you get the, the fine dust through it all, it makes these hard to turn. So we want to have a bit of a tool that gives you a bit more leverage. And that was the initial problem. And for me, having a tool that's on hand is important as well. The way I started was, let's see if I can get something that can clip into this handle hole. And this is where this, this thing started. Now this is version one and I made a clip in, but quickly realized I can't get it out. <laughs> that was the first issue and you can sort of see how it's progressed. And the next one I put little finger, finger grips on there and this worked a lot better. Didn't quite sit in properly, but I can get it out. Came across a problem straight away that this couldn't get down all the way and actually twist it. <laughs> So I solved one problem, created another. And that's where we've got to the sort of the, the one where I've given it a bit more clearance on the side, worked a bit better, but still not quite good enough. And you notice that the, the main holes in the middle, what ended up happening is I had to offset that hole to one side. So just that progression. And this one here, almost there, I clipped it okay. And yeah. So we're getting closer. From here, it was more of a refinement. So we had the problem of clipping, got that solved, had the problem of getting the, the thing out, got that solved, clearance, that was not too bad, just a refinement now. We decided to print these because that was a quick way to get stuff to market and we settled on a material, um, it was carbon fiber filled PETG, so similar to the, the uh, water bottles and so forth you have, so very durable material. So as you can see, there was a whole bunch of iterations and a whole bunch of uh, changes and the fact that we were able to 3D print and quickly sort of test and get a feel, because being able to design on CAD doesn't really uh, allow you to experience what it's like on the actual product. So we've got ourselves to a point where we're happy with a product and we offered this 3D printer product, but. I think the aim was always to get enough volume to explore getting these injection molded. It's a much more efficient process and it's also a process that uh, we want to learn how to use, especially when we get products that can get, take on the full advantages of injection molding being the, the different types of materials, the form factors, also the, the cost and efficiencies that injection molding brings. So we released the 3D printed version and in the background we were working on the injection molded version. So you can see here, these are all the, the um, iterations of the injection molded um, design changes. So initially we created a tool, which is quite expensive, and we needed to tweak that tool to get those dimensions right. And we tried a whole bunch of materials because we needed to allow for some of the variations in the uh, handle hole size not only from manufacturing, but also from temperature. So as things get hot and cold and so forth, we wanted something that was going to accommodate those slight variations in size so that the tool was easy to clip in and easy to get out. Because initially we made them too tight. So we've got this ABS one here, nice and solid. This is what Lego's made out of. Yeah, that one's, that one's solid. That'll, that one will hurt if you threw that at somebody. We thought this looks fantastic, but as soon as we tried to See, that one's a bit tight. Yeah, this one was a tight one. A ABS one. So we thought, oh, how are we going to solve this issue? What we decided to do was explore some different materials. So this is a TPE, and it's super soft. Yeah, look at that. It's pretty cool, though. It's almost like a bit of a rubber. Um, very similar to the, the, the material on shoes, on the soles of shoes. So TPE, TPU, a, a, a urethane. Now this was probably an extreme and you know, it works and it clips in, but now it's a little bit too, what do you call it, compliant. Now if I pull that up a bit just to simulate it being stuck, you can actually go all the way around. Mm. Yeah, see, it's, it's, it's the wrong way around on the bottom there. The knuckles this way and that's that way. Oh, 
It's got a hernia. There you go. So we needed something in between the two. These ones here, they're all different colors, but they're just for us to identify the different uh, proportions of materials to get a different uh, hardness, softness, to get the sweet spot. It's like the Goldilocks. So the final, the final product is actually a mixture of, uh, where's the polypropylene one? That one. A mixture is halfway in between those two. So that's, that's a full blend of uh, a rigid material and that's the um, more flexible material. And what we ended up with was something in between to give us sort of the best of both worlds. So we eventually settled with this mixture of um, sort of plastics that gave us a little bit of give, but the rigidity as well. So it gave us the best combination of being able to clip in place as well as giving us the uh, structural strength to turn the pin, especially if it's like really stuck. It actually you know, will give you that leverage. We we're happy with the functionality of the tool. We just had to get the color right. So there was a few different colors. We settled for a red um, to make it easier to find just in case you drop it in the, the sand or the mud. And it, it is our signature color. So after all that, after all the testing through the 3D printing, through the, all the things we needed to do to get the injection molded Trax key right, we've ended up with this injection molded Trax key. Now these are actually made in Australia uh, at a local business just 20 minutes away from us. And they've got UV stabilizers in there to uh, make sure that they're gonna last in the outdoors out on your tra max tracks. I actually quite like that one. That was a red, petchy carbon fiber filament. Um, and actually that's, that's not too far different from the final product. But the weight, there's a weight difference as well. These feel really light and potentially weak. These ones here, they've got a bit of weight to them and then actually, because it's a bit of a softer um, material, because we needed it to have it a, a bit of give, it actually feels really good in the hand. I think the biggest challenge, the biggest struggles we had when developing this was just allowing for the fact that plastic, whether it be the Max Trax or the tool, changes in size and has different sort of properties. So trying to get a, a good balance that will give you a form and function, as well as allow it to clip into place and hold into place. Um, that was a big learning for us coming through this. The fear factor around this one was the, the time and cost in the tooling. Because once you, you uh, commit to that tooling, it's really hard to change it. Or you have to invest again in that tooling. You want to make sure that that's going to uh, pay for itself over the life of that product. I suppose that was a bit of a fear. And that's why having the opportunity to be able to refine that product or at least get it to a stage where we can release it and get some feedback so that we can put those last little tweaks and changes so we commit to the tooling to create the you know, injection molded part. That was really useful because I don't think I would have been confident. Imagine making a tool for that one straight off. That would have been disaster. Um, so you know, just that whole process. And I always say it's always better to have something to play with in your hand to make those changes and sort of see how things you know, feel in the hand, how, how you interact with it, and whether it's actually something that's gonna solve the problem properly. Uh, for me, I like the fact that it clips in place and it's right there and then, um, easy to use. <laughs> got it, I got it. <laughs>